trying to get me on, on a new subject. Hey, y'all, thanks for joining uh, September 26th. Last Thursday of the month, we're heading towards Halloween. Yeah. 2024. I like Halloween. We've got a hurricane here in Florida. Well, part of it. Most of it's going up towards uh, Atlanta. Oh, you ought to see it over here. Everybody's in. I mean, they're telling yeah. everybody to be fearful and panic. And they shut the schools down. Hour. It's ridiculous. I know. It's babies. It, it's the weather channel program. <laughs> it, it was worse than this. I remember in, in college, I remember going in, in the class and the weather was worse than it is right now. Mm. With the hurricane coming, we didn't care. It, it's normal. It's just a hurricane. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> there are times when you got to run for your life, but come on. We know like four or five days ahead of time, if that's true. So it closes the courts down. <laughs> yeah, I mean, a lot of courts are closed. Uh, whatever. So that's what's going on now. But I'm here. Yay. It's fun having lots of fun. And uh, so I, I was just looking at, gosh, some of these articles like, uh, uh, Rob Braxman. Oh my gosh, this guy, you got to check him out on YouTube. I know, Rob he's wonderful. I, yeah. It's hard to keep boring. up with him, but yeah. He's I, so, you know, nobody reads the terms of service for Apple and it's not even binding on people, but they still do it. The terms of service for Apple, this technology that we're using all the time that we're being tricked into using and <clears throat> to enter, to to get goods and services and interact with people socially, the, the system is corralling people toward using technology as the medium mm -hmm. instead of just talking to people right. because that way you can be manipulated you can be under surveillance yeah right and his latest video about the apple 16 and all it does to track you yeah exactly you guys saw that that's what i put out there yeah. so so i wanted to talk tonight about that and uh and i don't know how long we're gonna go i don't, I don't plan on talking a lot about you know that but you guys know and you know kind of what my re recommendation is on it. There's some things we can do. We're going to be using the technology. We're just going to be using it. All right. So um, much of this is covered in the video series at aceofcoins.club. But I really focus on, there are some subjects like casework, problem solving, financial risk. Those are things I cover in, in the uh, video series. Now, one of the things that I think is up and coming that this is going to become more popular is while people are focused on the IRS and FinCEN, the fam family court is destroying you. It's destroying family wealth. So I have a whole series on that and it's always developing. And then of course the debt collection, that's, you know, old hat debt collection. I'm the only one in the country that has a method to prevent a debt collection from everybody, everybody. If it's the IRS or the bank suing you, my methods will prevent a, the collection of your money. So that gives you the power to decide if or when you're ever gonna pay any of the creditors or just let the clock run on them, okay? Aceofcoins.club. And one of uh, one of our members was nice enough to take his time with me the other day and go over a case and uh, as a tutorial. It was kind of fun. I don't know. I think it was kind of fun. <laughs> it was a lot of fun. All right. So yeah, so we go over there and we pick apart what the lawyers do and why they do it mm -hmm. and then what to do about it. And so we get into this thing with Rob Braxman talking about, you know, the, the scary uh, iPhone 16 is total surveillance. I mean, you would think the government wants total surveillance, right? The police power wants total surveillance. So what would you think they would do like 20 years ago, 30 years ago, you would say, do you think the government should write a law that requires everyone to wear a device that they can be tracked, that they can be, you know, and collects the data and so forth. Why? Just give them a device that they love. That they ignore all the surveillance and use it and let the surveillance happen. So that's what's happening. People, look, the, people are voting for this unanimously. This is your new government software. It's the technocracy. Mm -hmm. Well, there's ways to deal with it. When I'm going to get into too much, but I want to get into some privacy. So, so what do we do? So, why is it? This is the question you should be asking yourself. Okay. If you're talking to people about privacy and they say, well, I don't have anything to hide. So if we're even talking about it, it means that the corporations that are collecting, using and storing your 
identifying data or your private information, okay, which is not really private, it's a commodity now, these corporations somehow have concluded that your data is very valuable. And they've concluded that it's valuable and you are giving it away for free and you're paying to have it taken away. You're paying these corporations to keep your data. You're paying them to take your data in exchange for benefits, which are bullshit benefits, okay? They're not really benefits. Points, systems, and all this stuff, points, rewards, and all this stuff. So you have to ask you, ask people in a conversation like that, why are these corporations valuing this data so much and you're not? Mm -hmm. If you don't care about privacy because you think it's all about whether or not you're doing something wrong, why are these corporations valuing it so much and why are you paying them to collect it? Mm -hmm. and, you're, and, and or you're giving it away for free. There's something wrong with that. So for those of you who want to do something about it, which I really encourage you to do something about it, I think I have a, a tool that at least you can use the way I've designed it, but you can augment it in some way. You can, you can modify it. What I'm thinking is because your data is so valuable and these corporations have already identified it as a pro as property, it's a commodity. And if it's not officially on the market, Chicago mercantile, so what? It's being used as a commodity. It is being used as a commodity. Your data is being used that way. So if the corporations are valuing it, why aren't you? Mm. So put so this this makes my point. You, I don't have to answer the question. How how can you justify so many dollars on your data, John, with the with the security agreement? <laughs> well, how does uh how does Apple justify spending billions of dollars to figure out how to collect it? It's got to be worth something more than they're spending on it. And so there's a couple things you can do. One is the old school. You can just look if you can't avoid it, like like tolls on the interstate, right? On the on your expressway. If you can't avoid the toll, then buy municipal bonds. Lend money to your government. You're already paying to use the roadways. You're paying more than if you paid a private, you know, use a private street. You're not paying for that. That's part of the tax base. But invest in your own debt. So if if someone's collecting your data, make them pay for it. And it's so easy to do because the UCC is amenable to this. If someone's benefiting from the use of property, you can you can express a lien on it if you're the lien holder, which you are. If you're the owner or lien holder, you can express a lien on it. So the way you you do that is the way I explained in my tutorial. Okay, you take you take a security agreement. It's a contract that says it identifies the property. So you describe your uh, your biometric data is what we're talking about. Your biographical and biometric data. Your social security number is just a number. But when it's co combined with your name, ooh, that's something special. Mm -hmm. And your date of birth, that's something special, right? That has value. That's worth money. If you don't think it's worth money, then try getting a mortgage without it. That'll tell you right there, real fast. So your biographical data is worth a lot of money. Your biometric data is worth even more. So, <laughs> okay, Ben, we'll get to that. You can bring that up. Yeah, they're going to default, whatever. There's no default. Watch, I'll show you what happens. All you're doing is you're creating a licensing arrangement for the use, storage, and collection of your identifying information, which is the property. So if you describe the property correctly in your lien agreement and you put the terms of the lien, which look much like a licensing agreement for, let's say, a song you've written or a poem or some intellectual property, that's what this looks like. There's nothing new. The case law is all behind it. The case law is all behind it. And thankfully the UCC has been amended recently so we can use it in this way. Meaning we can have a security agreement. We can impose a lien on the use of this data on the collection of it uh, without someone's overt consent. The fact that they collected it is the consent and the mm -hmm. UCC recognizes that. Thank you very much. Whoever put the UCC together. It's international by the way. So, Create a security agreement. Now, the way I like to do it is this. So I describe the property and you see, I have a very, for those of you who had me do this for you, there's an, a very, very elaborate uh, way of doing this. And, and by the way, someone asked me the other day, and I'm a little bit late on getting this back to her, but she asked me for information on AT&T as the debtor. So I had to search uh, high and low for this. I'll, I'll see if I can grab it while I'm talking here. So in my security agreement, I described the property that, that is the subject of the lien. 
Uh, and so here's an example. So my my retinal pattern is one, right? The way in which I walk, there's actually a, an identifying property to the manner in which you walk. And the the, the anatomical term for this is your gait. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so there, there is some, there are some technical terms and things like that, scientific terms that you may want to use, um, like your DNA, right? A blood sample. Blood is a tissue, right? So the collection and use of your tissue, right? And the data collected from your tissue, like if you go get a, a blood test on something, make sure that you put a lien on that and make sure that that data is not being used somewhere else because maybe someone's gonna patent your DNA and then when you go need surgery on something, you're gonna get charged a whole bunch of money <laughs> because you have to pay a, a royalty. Ah, oh, now it's important. Mm, let me see that one again. For those of you who don't understand, if you haven't heard this before, imagine getting a blood test, right? But you don't put terms on the collection of your uh, blood sample. Well, what if there's no terms, it's abandoned property. But what if the uh, what if the hospital or whoever does the testing lab, what if they have an arrangement with somebody that's going to take a sample of your uh, blood and go to the U.S. Patent and Trademark Office and register a patent on the DNA? And then put that in a national database so that whenever you go for surgery or medical treatment for something, you're going to have to pay the royalty for for uh, that use using your own tissue because you don't own the rights to it anymore. Someone took them. What? No, that never happens. Well, it's already happened. It's been happening for at least 20 years. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I mean, I'm sure there, there are stories on that. Batman's going to be the first one to tell you all that stuff. So, um, and thank you for that, by the way. You're pretty good about that. But if I can find this uh, real quick on the AT&T thing, I'll share it with you. Um, I'm sorry to, to, to cause a bit of a delay here, but it is kind of important. So I went and found, so I had to go through all the different things with AT&T and I found where they had, an, a, a, I was looking for the general counsel for AT&T and I wanted to just, um, you know, add AT&T as the debtor on the security agreement. Uh, I don't see it handy here. So yeah, it's not handy. So I'm not going to waste a bunch of time on that, but I'll find it. But anyways, you can find it. And, uh, and I have tutorials on how to do this. So in my security agreement, I have um, the description of the property that we're going to put a lien on. Okay, we're going to impose royalty payments, licensing. And so once the description is there, then we have terms. So what are the terms? Well, the terms are, you're going to pay this much money. <laughs> if you collect my data, you're going to pay this much money. What does that look like? Well, it's going to look a lot like if you're licensing out the use of your uh, song lyrics to a famous country music artist, right? It's going to look like that. Just you can go to any intellectual property attorney and get a standard contract. You can go buy one off the internet. You can go find one for free. A licensing agreement for the use of intellectual property. That's what it's going to look like. And so what you're going to call it, instead of intellectual property, you're going to call it biometric data. It's almost the same thing. The industry, which I want to get into this on another call. I think we've talked about this quite a bit, but the industry uh, calls it likeness, your likeness. It's very important to understand that. So in this agreement, imagine you trying to em uh, enforce a, a, a foreclosure on your royalty uh, claim on the use of your data against, let's say, pick a company, AT&T. Well, maybe they fight you, right? They, you're going to go through the court system, right? Well, wh what's the, what good is the lien then? If it's up for debate, but it shouldn't be. So what you want to do is in the lien... Use it as a settled matter, right? As we as we talked about before. Mm -hmm. How do we do that? Well, make it to where the trial court doesn't have anything to say about it. It's a lien. That is the law of your property. The lien. And the lien, all liens are statutory. I understand that. Just like a mortgage, it's all statutory. Where does the statute come from? The UCC. And the UCC was incorporated in all your state statutes. So you can use the UCC international version or your state statutes, which are almost identical. Almost. So it's a statutory lien when you record a security agreement on the use, storage, and collection of your identifying information, biometric data, and your biographical data, especially when they're used together. It's even more valuable, right? And what is the dollar amount? I don't know because I don't haven't done the research on what kind of money these companies are making. So it's going to be somewhere in there. 
but I can only imagine that it's, you know, at least costing them a few pennies to collect your data. It's maybe costing them a few dollars to collect and store your data, but then they're using it and they're making money with it over and over and over again. I don't even know how they're doing it, but if I were to do the research or someone would do the research, I think you'd be really angry to find out what's going on. Don't believe the terms of service when they're saying, we're not going to give your information to somebody else. They're, it's completely false. Mm. They're lying. They're lying and lying and lying. And when they get caught, they say, oops, sorry, how much do I owe? And then they move on and continue doing it. As you know, this is what they do. So put a lien on your data, put a dollar amount on it, try to do the best you can. I mean, I start with a low dollar amount. I start with like, it's a licensing agreement. $8 a month, I don't know, something like that. It, at some point, I think if enough people do this, uh, it's gonna be a, an issue on the balance sheet of these corporations. And it should be. It should be something that has to be disclosed to uh, the investors and the you know the stockholders, the investors, and their insurance carriers. It's an it, it's a risk. It's a risk without a, a way to calculate. There's no way to calculate it yet. It's almost an infinite risk. It could be calculated, but right now it's kind of an infinite risk because you got all these millions of people, like for with eight, Apple, for example, they could put liens on all their data, and all the liens could be different dollar amounts. It could be all kinds of terms. That's crazy, but we can do it. It's legal to do that. So um, I put in the security agreement an arbitration clause that makes it to where any dispute over this, the use of collection of storage or whatever, like if they don't want to pay you, like if you send them a notice and demand to pay and uh, they don't pay, they ignore you, whatever, you simply don't go to court. You don't sue them. You already have a lien. You already won. All you need to do is get the police power to go collect the money. So you have to get permission for that. You're not going to court to try to get the judge to agree with you. So we, we get rid of that drama. And you're also not going through an arbitration process to get anybody to agree with you. What you're doing is getting a confirmation of the terms of the uh, security agreement. And the only, the only defense would be that it was a, a, a product of fraud. I don't see that one happening. Mm -hmm. What is your what is your claim? I don't know, but or they could claim something like their defense would be, well, you didn't have the right over your biometric data. Hmm. Really? Good luck with that one. <laughs> um, but you want to get you want to take your security agreement and reduce it to a an award that can be confirmed by the, the judge. So the judge doesn't get to talk about the 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 merits of the agreement. And and likewise in the uh in the um arbitration process, the arbiter, whoever is going to arbitrate the matter, it's outside the court system, uh, doesn't get to go out, doesn't get to change your agreement as, as it is. Right. Because it is a, what's known as a statute staple, just like a mortgage contract is a statute staple. That means that it's a law that is incorporated into your state law that the creditor can use. This is, this is very powerful. So, this makes it much easier for you to go through an arbitration process to get a confirmation of an award that says AT&T owes me X dollars because of these terms. You can't change the terms. So then I get, I get an arbitration award and I apply to the trial court in my state for a confirmation of the award and I get a certified copy of the award and I record it in my county and then I can then use the police to go collect the money. I can apply for a writ of garnishment or attachment against property held by the debtor, AT&T, cash in the bank. How easy would that be? Yeah, I don't use the standard um, you know, arbitration firms. And, we, and I don't want to get into that. I mean, we can talk about that, but it's a solution, okay? I'm not sending you on a dead end, okay? Alex, what did you want to add on there? So what's... I already filed a couple of these maybe eight to nine months ago uh, in California against Apple and uh, Facebook. What would be the next steps if you did want to actually pursue that dollar amount in the agreement? And what would be the first steps? Calculate the amount owed as of today. Send a notice to the party at the address stated on the security agreement and demand payment and give them 30 days or whatever your agreement says you're, you can do. That's what you do. See what they do. 
Okay, so the the amount in the agreement, what would you do? Prorate that over the over a yeah. number of months? Figure out what it's worth today based upon the terms of the agreement. The terms it will tell you. I forget how I had it set up in there. Got it. I'll go through it. Come up with a number. And if you're wrong, don't worry about it. It's okay. Just make a demand for a dollar amount for what they're doing. Now, um, you should have some indication as to when they began collecting your data and what they collected. I mean, you could just make the accusation, right? They could the, the the defense they could have is we didn't collect your data, so at least you want to show in your application for the uh, app for the arbitration that they collected your data. Got it. That would help. Yeah. So, That's interesting. So, so give some examples of that. <clears throat> yeah. So, uh, so anyways, if you open an account with them, if you have a service with AT and T, done. You got it. Done. You win. <laughs> your bill, your bills, right? Your bills proven. Bill, that's another one. Your bills, right? Mm -hmm. um, their policy statements. Yeah, oh, they, like like if, a, if it's an Apple, the iPhone says all the things that they collect. It does tell you. Um, yeah, without a signature, your uh, security agreement is valid. There's a there's a provision at the bottom of my uh, security agreement that restates the statute for that. So yeah, you don't need their signature. Now, kind of in parallel with this. These companies that are collecting your data, where you're going to put a lien on the company, you could also make another claim for data breach immediately. As soon as you open an account with AT&T, for example, make a claim against them for data breach. Tell, argue that, make the claim that the moment you gave them the data, they gave it to somebody else. That's a data breach, and they did so in violation of their own uh, disclosures to you. See what they say to that. If you want, if you guys want to take on the beast, this is what you do. Make them pay for your data. They're going to get it. They've already got it. They've been getting your biometric data for since you've had a driver's license. You've been using biometric data to get by in society anyways. People recognize you, right? That's because they recognize your biometric data, your face. <laughs> the thing we have a problem with is someone's um, able to record it permanently and then negotiate it with for value. And then we're excluded from that. If I took your car on the weekends and, and ran it as a taxi, hey there, hey. Uh, if I ran it as a, a taxi uh, and made a bunch of money and then gave it back to you on Monday, would you be all right with that? <laughs> and I didn't give you a share of it. I mean, come on. I know it's not exactly like that, but that's what's going on. Is someone's using your property and you're not being compensated and you're saying thank you very much and you're giving it for free and you're paying for that. Stop doing that. <laughs> So anyways, that's just my take on it. Um, that's the legal aspect of it and the way to use the legal system so that you're not having to sue people and get into litigation and waste your time. Mm -hmm. Just get an arbitration award and go get a confirmation of it and then do a foreclosure, which is you file an application to the court for a, uh, it's perfunctory, meaning that you just got to ask and the judge will say, okay, they'll give you a writ of a continuing attachment, re re continuing attachment uh, of AT&T's property, of Google's property. And you just go levy their bank account. Okay, does that answer your question? I know people ask me how to do that. And I know I express, I have other plans, but why not? You can do it. You, you're, you, have, you do not have a legal right until you say you do. And right. you better have standing. And you have standing because where did that data come from? You. Mm -hmm. Be careful, so, like sign agreements so you're not waiving rights. But that's why I have the provision in there that says notwithstanding any other agreements. I put that in there for you. <laughs> and also, like once people start doing this and start taking it through, like then we can answer the questions as they arise. And, oh, yeah. You know, just start doing it and we'll move through yeah. it. No one's done it yet. No one's gone and, and tried to make a claim on it. I haven't. I don't think I will. I mean, maybe, maybe next year I might, but. I have other things I'm doing, but it's for you guys to do it. This is what I do. Uh, if there's a problem and I'm thinking, okay, I might have a solution. This is one way to look at it. I mean, there's other ways where you can just use technology that is not collecting your data. Okay, a de-Googled phone, you can do that too. If I'm gonna buy a TV today, it's not gonna be a smart TV. I'm not gonna just go buy something off the shelf at Walmart. What I will do is buy a projector so that even if, and I'll make sure that I can, take it apart and make sure that I don't have any, there's no video cameras in there or audio devices that I don't want. Or 
I'll, or if there are that I can't remove or something, the projector is going to filter out the ability. The way I'm using the TV is going to filter out the ability to video record me in my own home. So you can take steps like that. But you're, you're almost not going to avoid it because if you look at with the iPhone 16, if you're watching Rob's video, video there, <laughs> the people you're sitting next to every day or at restaurants or walking around, they that that data that's collecting your data. Yeah. Same with the Teslas. What do you think mm -hmm. the Tesla's doing as it's driving down the street and you're right behind it, it's watching you? Where do you think that data is going? Everybody should put a lien on Tesla. Yeah. See how Elon likes that. Let's talk about that one, Elon. Yeah. If you drive a Tesla, you work for them. Yeah, basically. <laughs> so, but yeah, this it's a monster. That, you know, I talked to some doctors and they are they're talking about how the magnetic field generated by that beast is destroying the biosphere. You have no idea, guys. Hopefully you don't have any idea because you're hopefully you're not sensitive to that uh magnetism. But it's it's the, the worst thing that pollute our environment, it's worse than anything we've ever had. And you can't see it and you can't feel it for most of us. Mm. That's the hard part. Mm. How, how do I tell somebody that's the worst thing ever? And they go, oh, it looks fine to me. It's so quiet. <laughs> tell that to the kid who's digging up the sulfur in Africa mm -hmm. and all these raw materials and the dirt with his bare hands. Hey, John, you got a minute? Yeah. Hey, John. Joe, I, I actually owned a Tesla for three years, and that magnetic drive motor inside there gave me hemochromatosis, which turns the, sh the blood sugar in your body to iron, and you can't get rid of it. And it takes like 45 days to sit outside of the Tesla, away from it, um, before it to go away, before it to start to mitigate. That go away with humidity. And I have to, and the, the answer is you can't detox or get uh, red blood cells or iron out of your body. You have to donate blood every month. So it's raising your blood sugar and doing something to your red blood cells? No, it takes the blood sugar and turns it into iron. Ah, so you have oh, too much iron in your blood, so you have to donate blood in order to clear the iron out. Right. Once right. you stop being in its field. Oh. Right. It, it, it took, it took, it took um, one of your people that I met at one of your um, seminars, you know, three months to tell me, tell me this issue. I, I already had the problem. And my doctor said, I don't know how to do it. You know, I don't know what to do it. So they gave me another protocol, a root cause protocol to get rid of it. And then I got rid of the test button. So now it's the effect of mitigating. But it's a serious problem that no one's talking about. And the iron the iron issue is a, is a true epidemic that's happening because of the test that you don't hear about. Because a lot of people are suffering through it. And there is no, there's no uh, you know, wear a pink ribbon for people from social. There is nothing like that. So, yeah. yeah. I thought it should be a good thing. So Sorry. This is thanks, Jim. That's a big problem. So you know, we can we can attack it on the privacy aspect because we can express legal rights and we have a remedy. As far as getting people not to buy a Tesla, I don't know what to tell you on that one. <laughs> uh, but but as far as you know, uh, doing something for your own the use of your own property, we should be doing something instead of letting them do it. I mean, there's so many things you could be doing. You could send send a letter and say, uh, I I think you, there's a data breach. I've I've given my data to your company. And I think it's been uh, disclosed to other companies, uh, other parties, other than what I've approved. Start that conversation with the general counsel. What would the general counsel do if he received 40 of those in one year? He might have a standard form letter in response, but what if two of those people sued the company for data breach? Then it becomes public record, right? That's a big problem for a company to have a data breach in the first place. Mm -hmm. But if the government's not going to do something or it doesn't invoke the data breach disclosure law, but then somebody's suing for a data breach, what does that do for everybody else? It alerts them to the possibility that their data may have been disclosed to unknown parties as well. And it calls for an audit because at some point, maybe your F F FTC might get involved for an audit or the, you know, the Consumer Protection Financial Board or whatever they call it thing. So anyways... It's just something to look at. But as far as what I'm talking about for tonight's call, I just want to talk about privacy. And look, it, it's 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 a screaming problem. Mm -hmm. And I think you, you should you, you, you should be really thinking of doing something about it. Like, you know, like I'm saying, write a letter or whatever. Put it put a lien on your property. Mm -hmm. You're just giving it away.
Well, it's really interesting what you're saying too about like, okay, maybe one letter, nothing. Uh, but if the general counsel gets 40 letters, what would, I mean, what, sure. is, what would that be like? And it just makes me think like even this group right here, if we all just like started doing it yeah. together and just, you know, started taking steps and, and moving forward and like, let's do at yeah, no this month or let's do privacy is Apple privacy. this month or whatever. You know. Yeah, look at these articles, you know, on the thing with the signal, there's a war on your privacy and you have to understand Privacy is a property right. Yes. So yes. privacy is a property right and everybody wants you not to have it. What does that mean? That's like saying you can't own gold. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You guys would fight to the death on that one, wouldn't you? But why are you giving away your private data? Mm -hmm. you're, not, you're not even looking at that. That's the gold. <laughs> it's coming from the UN, the UN 2.0. Yes. There will be no privacy. I mean, mm -hmm. that's part of the that's agenda. They that means you have to have no right no property They're, they want to take your private property from you yeah that's what they intend to do mm -hmm. and some, yeah doing, yeah and your rights are your private and, property. And, and also what jim shared uh the five g is the same way on damaging you i yeah. mean there's doctor and scientist after scientists that have gone in front of congress even and the 5g is a military weapon and it is damn not only us the insects the plants everything so it's and more than the problem. Just your Did data you if you could somehow express the damages, then you can make a claim against the government for allowing this or not doing something. So, but you, but the problem is, I, I don't know how to make a claim. I, I hear the frequencies in my ears. I'm very sensitive. So all the time, all I hear this high, high, high frequency, uh, but I can't do anything about it. It's not damaging me that I know of. I can't measure it. And mm -hmm. if I could, I guess it probably wouldn't be enough. I'm still functional. I'm not, I don't know that I'm having any problems. So, so how do you, that's the problem where, that's where we are. <laughs> We can't do anything with the court system. We can't do anything in the court system. We might be able to do something in business, right? We could put liens on things. That is one thing we could do. But yeah, your private pro your privacy is private property. And really, you've been giving it away. And you've been paying people to take it from you. And so why wouldn't they? You've been helping them. Uh, there's a question. Does your program for the biometric data on asocoins.club have the template for this or do we need to purchase from you? another? There may be a template in there, maybe a form, the, the thing. I don't know. I think I put it in there. I think it's there. But it does it does tell you, it gives you the definition that I like to use for describing your, your property. Mm -hmm. uh, and there's an arbitration clause in there, which, you know, if you ask me like every three months, I'll probably update the arbitration clause. But it's it's perfect. It'll work perfectly. But yeah, you should take the course and do it. Now, if let's say you you take the course and maybe there is the so-called template and you don't like it or say, hey, John, do you have the latest one? I'll give you the latest one. It's okay. Just ask me. Just take the course, though. Yeah, okay. On the eye appointment, the handwritten expression of your rights. I don't know what you're trying to do there, but just realize that HIPAA is kind of a passive law where if you disclose your medical data to a party, a company or an individual, and that individual is a regulated person under the HIPAA law, then he has a certain duty under the HIPAA law for the use of your property, of your medical medical data is also property right. It's passive. So it depends on you disclosing it first. So just be sure that you know who you're disclosing it to and whether what his obligations are under HIPAA, because some people don't have an obligation under HIPAA. Like if you give it to your neighbor, he has no obligation under HIPAA. If you give it to your neighbor, you've waived your rights under HIPAA and your neighbor can give it to anybody he wants. So just keep that in mind. That's how HIPAA works. So I'm not sure what you're trying to do there. We can talk about that, I'm sure. Yeah. Um, yeah, health information exchange networks, right? So be, be aware of who's collecting your data when. You may have to ask some questions. And then who has custody of your data once it's being used. Like maybe you want the doctor to have your data. I do sometimes because I want him to make a correct analysis of something, a correct diagnosis. So he needs to have that data, but I want to know who the custodian is and what he's going to do with it. Cause I'm going to tell him, I kind of don't want to ask him, what are you going to do with it? What I want to do is say, don't do anything with it that I didn't tell you you can do. <laughs> right. And the clean way to do that is, I mean, you can send that, you can do that with a letter um, and, or you can put a security agreement on the use of your data mm -hmm. and just make your doctor the debtor. 
Yeah, and don't you think also something like I refuse to participate in any studies? Because that's what I think they do sometimes too, is they uh, give profiles, anonymous profiles to studies. And they yeah, you can do that in a letter. Yeah. In a letter, you can write a letter to your doctor and say, I, throughout our, our interaction, I, I may be giving you some of my medical data and biographical data, tissue mm -hmm. samples, and things like that. I want to I want to put you on notice that you're not to give those to any other parties other, without my consent beside yourself. And if you have to send my work, uh, my uh, tissues to a lab, a laboratory, I want to know before you do. I want to know which laboratory, and I want to know its policies regarding the collection, use, and storage of my data that you're going to give. You see, and what that does is maybe your doctor ignores you, but what happens then is it, it transfers the obligation from yourself to the doctor, and then you have a claim now against the doctor if you want to make it. Mm -hmm. invasion of privacy it's a tort claim among other things so right. and it's also a way to get the conversation started you know because we as a society are not really having this conversation together uh yeah. it's it's kind of in little camps but if you start talking to you know various providers and saying this is something i you know want you to be aware of then yep you it'll trickle to it'll yeah it'll trickle around yeah uh, yeah, so so that's good to be diligent when you go to the doctor's office, especially. It's really good data they're collecting. It. It's, it's a really vulnerable vulnerable point for you, uh, for medical data. Um, yeah, so anyways, I'm just saying, the, I'm talking about this lean, but also there's some practices you may want to consider, but I want to make the point, if you're in this conversation or you should be thinking this to yourself, why am I giving this data for free? And why are they valuing in this data so much? And I demonize them all day long, but I'm giving my data to them for free. Why wouldn't they take it for free? I'm giving it to them for free. Why would they act differently? Why would they try to advocate for rights that I have if I'm just going to give it to them? Mm -hmm. How are they evil? I'm stupid. <laughs> They're not evil. I'm stupid. It's a corporation. It's going to do that. Just like a dog. A dog doesn't pretty much have a conscience, right? It's just going to do what it feels good doing. That's what a corporation is going to do. A corporation feels good making profits. <laughs> so you, you're the one that has to do something about your data. Yeah. Well, Kim, there's a, there's a way to, you know, have privacy. I don't know. May, maybe, uh, you know, if you want to discuss it, let me know. But there's a way to have privacy with, with uh, professionals, you know, when you're interacting with them. There, there's a way to, to get something done the way you want. So... Yeah. But anyways, you want to control the use of data, control the use of it. There's there's a legitimate use. OK, there are legitimate uses for your data. You got to give it up sometimes for insurance because your insurance coverage has to be based on actuarials. And that requires your identifying data. For example, it needs your data, your date of birth. OK, a lot of times when it has to do with your health. OK, your date of birth is important. So you got to You got to have some common sense with it. But again, you you still want to be the owner of your data. Don't just give it away. Don't just give it up. All right. Well, enough of that. I'm not going to go on about it. Um, anybody want to ask me some questions about that? The the lien and the privacy, and then you know somebody asked me here about how do I send the notice. I mean, whatever you're comfortable with. Um, you can do first class mail, certified mail. I like using proof of delivery. Forget certified mail. Who cares? Right. Right. Proof of delivery is important. Yeah. You want to show it got there. Yeah, last known, last known address is all that's necessary. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Don't overthink that part. <laughs> You'll be fine. All right, y'all. Well, I'll let you go. And uh, yeah, you want to ask a crypto tax question? Okay. Darn it. I thought I was going to escape without that. Go ahead, <laughs> Peter. Oh, you want me to read it? Okay, one question. What if you use dollars to buy Bitcoin, then later sell coins into British pounds and stable coins? All right. Well, it depends on your um, residency or citizenship. Are you a UK citizen? Are you a, a US citizen? And what jurisdiction and who's reporting on that transaction to whom? There's a lot of variables in there. Okay, so if you're a U.S. citizen and you do that, no, no. and you're you're trading you're trading coins or you're selling your coins for a foreign currency, I mean, if you're doing that with a let's say a pawn shop, for example, some crazy transaction like that, the pawn shop may send you a ten ninety nine. Maybe you want to do that in in the uh, name of an LLC. That's kind of a weird question. 
But stable coins is not really getting out of the coins. You're still in the coins. So is it reportable and taxable? Probably not. Yeah, if you're using an LLC, you know, like some of the exchanges, they they have to be the account holder. If you're dealing with a, a pawn shop, he's going to say, who's selling this to me? And you can tell him an LLC. Well, Caleb Brown makes it easier. All right. All right. I'll, I'll answer one IRS question. One more. You, you answered, okay. A big tax bill. Okay. So if you're filing returns and you skip a year and then you continue filing, within a couple of years, the IRS will send you a letter and say, hey, remember us? And what, just go ahead and file the return. It doesn't mean you have to pay them, by the way. Just file the return. Why? Why not? If you're filing every year, why not? What's the benefit of not filing one year? If you're not going to file forever, okay, that's different. <laughs> All right, well, thank you. Appreciate everyone's commentary here. Hope I didn't leave anybody out. But anyways, uh, this is recorded. And yeah, I'm editing our other videos. And I will publish some of the segments uh, to our list. Great call. Yeah. Right. What we could do is like Moco mentioned, we could just gang up on a company and see what happens. About 50 of us. I wish. Yeah. I mean, I wish yeah. there was so much energy in this as there was for the tax protest movement. And those people are idiots chasing their tails. And I'm not trying to offend, offend anybody, but you're not effective. That's why it still exists. You're not effective. Right. <laughs> uh, but anyways, yeah, I agree. I wish that more people would get together and, and do this and just follow my example. Run with it. Because mm -hmm. I did one on Google. I mean, let's just all do Google or let's do... Yeah, pick one. I, so pick, yeah. Wow, when I when I saw AT T, when I saw Apple, ooh, Apple, AT and T, mm -hmm. go get them. Yeah, everyone could get the abstract from your section. We could all like just in the last minutes of the phone call, maybe like you can stop recording and we could just say, okay, what do we do? How do we, you know, just handle it? Let's, all right, let's let me, let me check stop it with the recording. Me.